Welcome back guys. Now in this video, let's discuss about non-Mendelian inheritance disorders. Okay, non-Mendelian inheritance. Okay, non-Mendelian inheritance. So disorders which do not obey the Mendel's laws of inheritance. Mendel, Gregor John Mendel, he gave certain laws. This is how the disease are going to spread from the uh, one generation to the other generation he gave certain laws okay but there are certain diseases which do not obey the laws of inheritance given by the mendels they are called as a non mendelian inheritance disorders now what are the examples of non mendelian inheritance first mitochondrial disorders mitochondrial disorders second one trinucleotide repeat diseases try nucleotide repeats okay trinucleotide repeat disorders third one genomic imprinting and the fourth example is gonadal mosaicism Okay, gonadal mosaicism. So, these are the four examples of the non Mendelian inheritance disorders. Okay, now first let us begin with the mitochondrial disorders. First, in this video, we will be discussing about the mitochondrial inheritance and the disorders which are coming under it. So, first let us begin with the mitochondrial disorders. Mitochondrial disorders. See, what is something special about this mitochondrial disorder? So, as you should know, there are genes in the mitochondria also. Usually, what do we know? So, every cell have a nucleus. Inside the nucleus, chromosomes are there. Inside the chromosome, there is chromatin. A DNA material is there. And the DNA material, the sequence of nucleotides is called as a gene. We know it. So, genes are present where? Inside the nucleus. But in which cell organelle other than nucleus, genes are present? DNA material is present. It is the mitochondria. So, mitochondria have its own DNA material. It have the own genetic material. It have its own genes for the production of proteins which are responsible for the oxidative phosphorylation. It have its own genetic material. Okay. See, this mitochondrial genes we will get only, only from the mother. Mother is going to give the mitochondrial genes but father is not going to give the mitochondrial genes. See, for you to easily understand this, let me show you. Here is the ovum. Okay, ova. So, ova is going to be fertilized by the sperm, right? Ova is going to be fertilized by the sperm. Sperm contains the nucleus, okay, the pronucleus. And ova is also having this nucleus. Here 23 chromosomes will be there. Here 23 chromosomes will be there. And what all this, all this is the cytoplasm. Cytoplasm, okay, with the mitochondria and all the other cell organelles. See, whenever fertilization is happening, whenever the sperm will come and fertilize this ovum, sperm is going to donate, that is the father. Father is going to only, he is going to donate this nucleus. He is only going to donate the genetic material. But all the cytoplasmic components, all the cytoplasm, whatever you have and I have, are coming from the mother. Mother is the one which, who is going to give the cytoplasm as well as the mitochondria which is present in the cytoplasm. So, the genes, the mitochondria, all the mitochondria, whatever were there in your body, all were given by the mother. Father is not giving any mitochondrial genes. So, the point which I want you to know here is, if there is any damage in the mitochondrial genes, if there is any mutation in the mitochondrial genes, that is mother. See, for example, mother is having a disease. Some mitochondrial disorder is there for the mother. Okay. Now, she is donating the mitochondria to the offspring. So, all the offsprings will be affected. So, mother having mitochondrial disorders, the children are going to get the mitochondrial disorders because the mitochondria are coming from the mother. But think like this, if the father is having a mitochondrial disorder, okay, the father is having a mitochondrial disorder, can he pass this disorder to the offsprings? No, he cannot pass the disease to the offsprings because father will not donate the mitochondria at all. So, affected mother is going to spread the disease to all the offsprings. It doesn't matter whether it's male, female, doesn't matter. Mother is going to donate the mitochondria to everyone. So, all offsprings will be affected. Father having the disease, he is not going to spread the disease because father is not going to donate any mitochondria. So, let us write one by one important points. 
mitochondrial genes okay mitochondrial genes from where we get them inherited okay inherited from mother okay inherited from mother so who is going to spread the disease affected mothers okay affected mothers spread the disease to all offsprings okay but affected father which means the father is having some mitochondrial disorder he do not spread the disease do not spread disease to any offspring okay now for easy understanding purpose okay for easy understanding purpose let me uh, show you here uh, pedi uh, that pedigree okay the pedigree analysis let me show you so that you will have a better understanding see now let's take this as a father and this is mother okay let me show you here see this is father and mother okay now mother is having the disease for example mother is having this mitochondrial disorder okay mother is having the mitochondrial disorder now say whenever they have the children see they are having two boys and two girls for example two boys are there and two girls two daughters two sons and two daughters are there who is going to be affected sons or daughters affected mothers will spread the disease to all the offsprings so all the offsprings boys are affected that's the sons are affected as well as daughters are also affected with this mitochondrial disorder some mitochondrial disorder which we'll discuss okay in a minute but see in the future okay in the future what happened this son is going to marry okay the son is going to marry some other woman okay he is going to marry this man is going to marry some other woman now this daughter is also going to marry some other person male now look what happens here here see again they are having three children for example this couple they are having three children okay this couple and this couple are also having for example two children okay one male and one female okay one male and one female here for example they have two females and one male okay now tell me who is going to get the disease see affected mother if the mother is affected all the offsprings will be affected with the mitochondrial with the same mitochondrial disorder but if the father is affected affected father do not spread the disease so they are healthy okay healthy and healthy not even carriers no, no such thing there is absolutely normal these are the absolutely normal uh, children okay so this is the point which i want you to so now let's discuss about the examples of mitochondrial disorders mitochondrial disorders see one thing i want you to know see in all of this mitochondrial disorders two things are very much common okay see mitochondria are responsible for the production of atp if there is a mitochondrial disorder atp production is going to be affected so these patients are going to see continuously the electrical impulses are going through our retina okay every damn second you are using your eyes the electrical impulses are going through your which cranial nerve optic nerve okay so optic nerve will be most of the time will be affected and most of the mitochondrial disorders are they are going to have the neurological symptoms neuropathies are going to be seen so two things eye related problems central nervous system related problems eye related problems nervous system related problems are going to be seen so mitochondrial disorders the patients are going to have the neuropathy okay these are the rare disorders neuropathy and ophthalmoplegia okay these things are going to be there so what are the examples of the mitochondrial diseases the first example i want you to know is melas m e l a s melas which is the most common mitochondrial disorder now here melas stands for what m e l a s right melas melas stands for mitochondrial encephalopathy in the name itself it's there it's a mitochondrial reason and that's causing the encephalopathy mitochondrial encephalopathy okay lactic acidosis la stands for lactic acidosis stroke like episodes okay
So this is mitochondrial encephalopathy, lactic acidosis and stroke like episodes. Now clinical features. Okay, clinical features. See, if a person is having such kind of like disorder, melas, you can easily know it because mother is also affected. Mother will be having some kind of, say, mother is, is also having the same kind of disorder, right? So, we can easily understand our mother is having the disease. So, offsprings, for example, in a family, there are two, two offsprings, they're both going to manifest the disease, same kind of disease. Okay, so you can get an idea. Are this is something following the mother to children, mother to all children, father to none. Okay, so. Clinical features are going to be tonic, clonic, okay, seizures, tonic, clonic seizures, and muscle weakness. Next, second disorder is CPEVO. Okay, CPEVO. What exactly is CPEVO? CPEVO stands for chronic progressive, chronic progressive external. Ophthalmoplegia. See here also in the name itself, it's there external ophthalmoplegia, eyelid problems, okay, weakness in the eyes. So, and also these patients are going to have bilateral ptosis. Okay, these patients present with the bilateral ptosis. Next disorder is MERRF. Very important image based question is there. MERRF stands for ME stands for myoclonic epilepsy. Myoclonic Myoclonic epilepsy means the myoclonic jerks are going to come. Okay, myoclonic epilepsy, like sudden contraction of the muscles. Okay, whenever the person is trying to take the, uh, for example, whenever the person is trying to sip a coffee, immediately he's going to have a sudden jerk. So he's going to spill the coffee. So those are the myoclonic, okay, myoclonic jerks. So myoclonic epilepsy, red, ragged fibers. Okay, so it's a muscle related pathology actually. Okay, myoclonic epilepsy, redirect, uh, fibers are going to be seen. So, here there is point mutation important. Okay, point mutation on 8344, 8344, the base pair. Okay, base pair in mitochondrial DNA. Okay, in the mitochondrial DNA. At this area, okay, in the mitochondrial DNA, at this base pair, there is a mutation. Okay, so what are the clinical features? The clinical features are going to be generalized seizures. Generalized seizures. It can be of any type, generalized seizures, tonic clonic seizures, myoclonic seizures, are they right? Okay, done. So though, apart from seizures, these patients are going to have the dementia, ataxia, cerebellar ataxia. You know, it's cellular attacks. I mean, it's intentional tremors. When the patient is trying to, when the patient is trying to initiate the moment, he's going to get the tremors. So, cerebellar ataxia. Okay. So, what are the three important disorders which we have discussed? Three important mitochondrial diseases. That is a melas, which is the most common. Mitochondrial encephalopathy, lactic acidosis, stroke-like syndromes, CPEVO. Okay. Chronic progressive external ophthalmoplegia, as well as MERF. Myoclonic epilepsy, red ragged fibers. Next, the fourth mitochondrial disorder is NARP. NARP stands for neurologic ataxia, sorry, neurogenic ataxia, retinitis pigmentosa, okay, retinitis pigmentosa, and the fifth disease is LON, L H O N, okay, L H O N, that is Lebers, okay. Hereditary optic neuropathy. Okay. See, in Leber's hereditary optic neuropathy, what exactly is the problem? See, the complex number one in the electron transport chain. Okay, complex number one in the electron transport chain is not going to function. So, dysfunction. Okay. So, which will lead to cellular death. Cellular death. In optic nerve. So there is a cellular death in optic nerve which will lead to acute or subacute vision loss. So it's simple, very common thing. Most of the it's most of the disorders, okay, whatever the disorders which I have discussed, most of the disorders are going to have the central nervous system involvement and the eye involvement. Central nervous system involvement is going to be seizures or ataxia. Seizures or ataxia most of the time. Okay. And the last one is called as a Lay syndrome. Okay. 
Lane syndrome. So what exactly is the problem with the Lane syndrome? In this condition, the mutation of the gene is SERF. Okay, SERF1 mutation is seen in 80% of the people and MT ATP6 gene mutation. Okay, ATP6 mutation is seen in 20% of the population. Both of them are going to result in the complex 1 dysfunction. Okay, complex 1 dysfunction. These patients are going to have the clinical features like nystagmus. Okay, nystagmus. Same optic nerve atrophy. Okay. Atrophy of optic nerve. Next, hyp uh, hypertrophic cardiomyopathies. Okay. So, which, which mitochondrial disorders are going to be responsible for hypertrophic cardiomyopathy? You should think about the Lay syndrome. Okay. Complex 1 dysfunction is seen in Lay syndrome as well as LHON, okay, leper sedentary optic neuropathy as well as Lay syndrome. In both of the conditions, there is dysfunction of the complex number 1. Okay, and optic nerve is going to get atrophy, cellular death. Here also atrophy of the optic nerve. Apart from this, these patients are also going to have ataxia. These are the not very much common things. It can be seen in many conditions, ataxia, in many uh, mitochondrial disorders, ataxia, okay, psychomotor regression. Psycho motor regression and failure to thrive. Okay, so these are the clinical features which are going to be seen in Lay syndrome. So, again, I am telling you what are the mitochondrial disorders which you should know Mela, CPEO, MERF, NAP, LHON, as well as Lay syndrome. Now, look at this image. In this image, what you can see is this appearance, this red color appearance. Okay, in the muscles, what you can see is this red color deposit. These are the red dragged fibers. Okay, seen in which condition? Red dragged fibers. Red drag, see, mitochondrial myopathy. Okay, mitochondrial myopathy where there is red dragged fibers. Okay, those are the red dragged fibers. If you look under the microscopy, see inside the mitochondria, what you can see because of the damage it cristae, it's looking like a parking lot, parking lot appearance. Okay, parking lot appearance is going to be seen in the MRF. See, abnormal mitochondria with circular damage cristae as a concentric membrane rings looks like a phonographic records. First thing is you can see the phonographic records, of course, okay, phonographic records, okay. Not only that, see rhomboid paracrystalline inclusions, okay, inclusions which are looking like the parking lots, okay, this just the cars are parked in a parking lot. So, these two are going to be seen in MRF, okay. See, it's seen in mitochondrial myopathy. The mitochondrial disorders where the muscles are getting damaged, you can see such kind of mitochondrial cristae, which will give the appearance of phonographic records as well as parking lot appearance. And in MRF, I have said you red-dragged fibers. Okay, myoclonic epilepsy, red-dragged fibers. So, these are the red-dragged fibers which are seen in the muscles. Okay, guys, with this, what we have completed? We have completed about the mitochondrial disorders. Okay, so the mitochondrial disorders, mainly important things, MRF, red dragged fibers, they will show you the image and they will ask you to identify it's the red dragged fibers, myoclonic epilepsy, red dragged fibers follows the mitochondrial inheritance pattern. And on electron microscopy, whenever you get this, it is parking lot appearance as well as phonographic records in the mitochondria. So with this, we have completed the mitochondrial disorders. Hope the video is helpful. Thank you.